hey, I know how to tell all your votes in for the PPP, eh? But I feel I officially changed my vote now. Yes. What? Yes. Well, listen, my vote officially changed. My vote officially changed. I was voting for the best jersey, now I'm voting for the best dub plate. And so far, I feel you and see I'm a vote. Hey, my again. Yes. Yes. Broly, come down, come down. Shampa, come down, come down. Raris, come down, come down. Yes. Come down from there, Rowley. Come down from there. No. Come down from there. Come down from there. One man. Yes. All right, all right, all right, all right. Welcome to episode 99 of the Cory Shepherd podcast. Listen, the war starting to know. I don't know if it's um. If this is local government election, but people getting signed, so Trinidad Killer clearly pick a side. <laughs> Salute for Trinidad Killer and the squad in yellow. The squad in yellow come out bad, you know, because here a couple of weeks ago. Wait, I was supposed to do all like, a welcome thing. Our producer here watching me, you know. Welcome to episode 99 of the Corey Shepherd podcast. You can find this podcast anywhere on all your podcast apps, Spotify, TuneIn Radio, anywhere. Please subscribe on those things for people who like to listen. And if you like to watch, subscribe to my YouTube channel, Corey Shepherd podcast that's the name of the youtube channel yes it is all right great yeah we onto something beautiful but do you and see i'm a voter letting it be known i put oh, it nine i'm no little yellow jersey i wish i had a yellow jersey i'll put it on today yeah, but too much boys take your time with me <laughs> so we 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 we, we going into the season of election and all these things we have plenty to talk about today you know the akil chambers thing still going on a matter of fact i'll let you know, know too that this is a short episode but i'll explain why in a second because a man in this room is responsible for why this episode is going to be short. But I want to take in a little clip from a man who is the new signing of the UNC. <laughs> a fellow by the name of John Michael Alibokas, I think is his name. Macamillion, you might know him as. And the man has some words for you, you know, in support of the UNC. Let me take in what Macamillion has to say. Three words. And I stand by. And we stand by. Yes, Maka. Who we stand by? Love. Right. Peace. Yes. And unity. All right. I like that. We stand by. Uh huh. Our motto. Yeah. Together we are. Together we are inspired. Right. Together we are. Go slow, Maka. We must achieve change. Yes. Yes. But further. Uh huh. Adieu. Further adieu. I want to bring mm-hmm. artists here to represent. All right, all right, Maka. All right, Maka. Maka, so Maka, bring it out. Trinidad killer for the thing. So UNC making big signing. So right now PDP only only fall behind. I will see Gary. What Gary plays name? NDT? DNV, do not vote. I can't remember his name of Gary Party. But UNC make their first move. And Maka is signed. Maka look like if you get um a constituency to run in no because you have a big role to play in this UNC rollout thus far. He's very, very central in the rollout of the UNC as far as I see right now. And Trinidad Killer is a dub plate man. So remember he had come down from there. He also a gunman. That was a Philip Alexander thing. Man, you know, if you're running again, so UNC might license the little gunman <laughs> like that, you know what I mean? And he have a next big song too. You know? What's the next big song he have? But, oh god, well, I don't know if he could do um back shot east, back shot west. I, I, I'm not sure if that will work on the political hustings, you know what I mean? But Makara will just work out his little speech and thing. But UNC, you know what I mean? I was saying a few weeks ago that the PDP going for the grassroots and the younger voter and things so unc clearly make back the move because if watson philly will just come down in the paria and make inroads maka and them come in there to stop that so salute the unc all well, i'm a vote so far we're going good so far voting for two different parties let me see if the other parties involved could get could get into swing back but as i say it's a short episode right this was a long week all, all the weekend was <laughs> i wonder how everybody weekend went so far i'll tell a little bit more weekend you know. Boy, be bad. Well, first and foremost, you are per- the first reason for why I have this a short episode. I didn't mean. Okay. Let me tell the story. You don't try to jumpstart the story. 
I was comfortably lying in my bed with my married wife, <laughs> enjoying some quality time. And a certain little fella come in the middle as he liked to do. And when we tell him to go back in his own room, he pick up my phone and hit me in my face and tell me he's not going back in no room. <laughs> and he come here to stay. And I had to eat that. So if I see him on camera, now you might notice I have a black eye. Die cap. Die cap. I, came I don't know where it's die cap. Talk I, properly. I, that, that was I came on the bed. I tried to come on the bed and lie down. You did not tell me go back in my room. I tried to come on the bed and lie down. And then I accidentally hit him with the phone. I was trying to pick up the phone and move the phone. So I didn't knock it off the bed. But I accidentally hit him. It was no accident. And then he did. So I feel one. And listen, I got a good lash out. I feel it not swell up. I was about to call the police and things. They say, don't call the police for him. Don't do him that. You have a good life ahead of him. I said, all right. And now I have a black eye. So if you're watching this on YouTube, <laughs> Stacey ain't beating me. You know what I mean? It's not no abuse. If you're watching this, you know, it's, 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 it's a safe blinger. <laughs> what the hell? I just, I just letting it be known that this man blacked my whole eye. Salute to you. You blacked your father's eye. Plenty of people I... will. Plenty of people that wish to hit their father straight right. They hit me a straight right. Eh? What's that wing for? What? What's that wink for? When you see yeah, 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 yeah. There's an audio experience. Nobody do listening don't know I was winking. So, that's the story. So, I'd say, well, that was bad enough. And I, you think about it, right? I get a little lash. And it was swollen. I put some ice on thing, but I was good to go. When I go on gym the next morning, I started to notice, but wait, something wrong. I'm looking like Uncle Fester in one eye. I said, but what's going on here? And every day this thing getting blacker and blacker. And people are forgetting that I have a black eye, right? So I know how it is. I don't want to make no joke about domestic abuse or thing, right? But Bungie and them had a song. I think it was Bungie and singing Sandra. <laughs> I feel I want to play that song. Because that song have a part with Bungie, Bungie, or singing Sandra asking a woman what it has went on. <laughs> and she says she get hit with her front door. You remember that song? And you don't know that song. You have no idea that song. I have no idea. All right, we'll play it so you can hear what it is. But um, in that song, the woman lying about getting lashed. And I'm feeling like that is what happened with me. Because I'm going on a line and I'm talking by people and, thing and not re- remembering that I have a black eye. So people watching my eye talking and laughing. And eventually when I realize that they're staring, I say, hey, I forget this boy, black, Zachary, black in my hair. man is like, hmm, okay. You're making it sound like I did it on purpose. You did do it on purpose, a hundred, a hundred percent. You not. see, you see, you're going back in your bed and you swing and you hit me with the phone. Audience, audience, that's cap. Listen, slow down. So that is, that is the deal so far. And that, that, that. As a matter of fact, since you never hear this song, right? And you're done on this episode. Yeah. Let me play a piece of this song so you can hear what it sounds like. Hey, hey, mother, how things? Things ain't good at all, sir. What? I have to protect you, yes, my child. Yes. Because some people going on for liars. Yes. I don't want you to take them. Yeah, well, I ain't trying yes. to mess up the study because they have a bricks in already. And I go breaks good. Here, yeah, what I'm telling you this. Check. I meet a girl by the club just the other day. Uh-huh. She says she going down so to get paid. I say, where you working? What is your rank? She said she's a manager inside Republic Bank. Well, inside the club was the place that I went to find a new face. Yes. But I see a girl in a suit, whining down in somebody's face. I get one buckle in my knees, cause my two eyes couldn't believe that the same girl was a striptease. This fella could lie, he bust up my eye. This little boy does lie, he bust up my eye. Uh-huh. And I stopped to hear what she had to say Talking to she, then I realized Behind she dark as was a bong eye A big black eye She where she minded that for She tell me she put the front door I said that in song incorrect Sister, you got to tell me more But if I tell me something wrong When I check the situation What she man wake up in she down Zachary could lie, he lie, lie Stop, he let me lie. listen to the real song. He lie, let me listen he to your real song. Let me listen to your real song. Whatever, man. <laughs> so, yeah, so that's the situation. And my eye black. But I was going good. I say, well, I'm going in the gym. And let me tell you something to her. I'm in the gym. And I finally reached back some semblance of where I used to be years ago. So I'm going for heavyweight. First time I bench pressed two plates and must be 10 years. <laughs> You know what I mean? Salute to a man like Kevin Lucas, who's the original strongman. 
And I say, boy, I back to two plates something. I say, all right, again in the game. You know what I mean? I'm coming back in. I went in the gym when it was Saturday and pick up some 90s and do some bench press. I can't really squat eh, because I feel a little knee pain and thing, but I can't wait to get back to squat. Well, leave it off. I was heading up to four plates. I, I think I do the four plates already, but definitely three and a half. And I back, I starting to head back there, but I still let me rest my knee and come back stronger. So I'm going good. Good. I tell you, I played some football late last week. And it's the first time I play football since you remember I gave my little, um, this, what do you call it, dislocated finger earlier in the year. The first time I play football on Thursday and I feel good. No pain whatsoever. When I finish sweat, I say nice work. I got controlling the ball nice, I turn in everything. I feel like I'm back in the game. So, so boy, I neighbor here, a partner of mine here. I don't, I don't make a run to drop back a certain man car for him. So I'll make a salt run. The man graciously come down the road with man. I say, well, boy, we done here already. Let me go by 519. Salute my guy, Jade Brown. Tell you a little bit more about Jade just now, right? But we go down and drop back the car. We sit down in 519, trying to plot up this Sunday now. How we reaching back up the road in time for sweat? But we thirsty. And we reach back while sweat is mid-flight. And my good instinct telling my boy, here was he seen? Forget this sweat. You're late. Me and he used to watch one another. We in dress. I had to go home for clothes and thing. But then I hear Riverview down 2 nil. And if it's a man who you could call on when you're down 2 nil, let me give myself a damn round of applause. If it's a man who you could call on when you're down 2 nil, it's me. So I said, Jade, I'm going to change quick. I'm going to bring back that 2 nil. And I want it to be known on record that this is not the first time I came late and meet Riverview 2 nil. Because the last time that happened and it was 2 nil, I came and I scored 3 and we win the game. So I know. Regardless of what people might want to tell you, I had that and they go need me. But we go on for it, babe, me, Jade went and changed too, and we, I end up having to play with the next side. Because two of here come out and play for the same side with a look away. So I go and play for and something keeps telling me it's ain't right because these men ain't no hard as run, they ain't no my, they ain't no my level of tappy. I'm not going nowhere too far. You had to find me. Yeah, yeah, you know what I mean? And it wasn't going right. I stretched for a couple balls, it wasn't right. And the, uh, uh, in the pace of the sweat, the thing about it is I ain't really warm up. And I ain't getting a chance to get warm on the field because the sweat done heated already. And boy, I, wa I wanted to be on record as well that the first two players of the game, that fellow who'd say he don't foul at all by the name of Keegan Keegs Parang Boss Barat, who say every time he say he don't, he don't foul nobody. He don't. But this time, every time I get the ball, he come in and then long after, he ain't calling no foul on himself. And nobody saying, hard luck, hard luck, you're good. He's saying that soft when nobody else care here. So fast forward now to I, I in the midst of the game and I see the ball coming down my side so I'm making a sprint now to try to reach last post. And boy, I feel a kick in the back of my heel like I never feel before. And I think to myself, but Keegs, but you see Keegs is a footballer, so Keegs is an awkward fellow. And remember I running off the ball, right? Uh, ladies who listening to this and think I will get to some things just now about the sort of serious matters first. I know when I'm talking sports, I can't take it for too long. But again, but I tell myself, Keeks kicked me so hard in the back of my foot, my trailing leg. I said, Ke for Keeks to do that, Keeks had to do that on purpose because he's not awkward. He could play the game. And, and he's not malicious neither. All he talk and talking. So I know he wouldn't do that. So I'm so surprised when I get that kick. I spin wrong more and I see Keeks. Well, he, could, he wasn't nowhere near it. So I started to say, but wait, like somebody hit me with a stone because let me tell you some excruciating pain. Well, the news is and the prognosis is that my Achilles is popped. Salute to my Achilles for holding on for 42 years. My Achilles is officially busted. And let me tell you about pain. I feel pain when I dislocate my finger. I tell you, a boy, listen, you're feeling the pee, vomit, pass, so everything one time in the same feeling. And let, me, let me explain something to all about when you pop your Achilles. I don't know if this ever happened to anybody before, but it do feel like it's internal. It feels like somebody hit you with something. <laughs> boy... I, boy, listen, I couldn't be around a better group of fellas. If we could have fellas come, they, 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 they watching. Everybody turn doctor, come and say, nah, look, he toes moving, he good, foot and break, like, thing, flexi foot, and thing, he fake in, he was going to throw anyhow, and you know, normal football talk. But salute my guy, Dylan Thomas, doctor and surgeon. And gratefully, he was in his scene, and, you know, Trinidadian is a hell of a thing. It's just like they sing in Sandra songs, you know, lying pretenders. Because he going through a thing, he said, all right, twig, 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 go. and I'm going to tell you something I can't take about Dylan, eh? and this is doctors and professionals in general. I can't take them, you know. Because all the time they be laughing and talking, hey, Dylan is a, jo a jovial fella, you know, if you know him. He say, hey, Corey, how are you going, boy? Everything comes up. <laughs> jovial guy. 
But when the man go in doctor mode, the man faces get serious like he one doctor face like hmm. Okay, twiddle, just twiddle your toes for me. Just, just, if, you, if you just twiddle your toes, let me see your toes moving. Okay. And he's get proper English too. Your toes moving, your toes moving there. Your toes moving. Okay, no, try, and, try and flex the foot. Try and flex the foot. You can flex it up, you can flex it back. What, what? what is that? Uncle Dylan. That's how Uncle Dylan is going every single time. He's <laughs> saying fully up thing, he's feeling a heel. So he's pulling me up now to stand up. And he's trying to say he could stand up on it. And from the time I, I could stand up, right? And men are say, yeah, he good, he's saying. And they get off the shoe for me. Listen, now, if you know me good enough, all my hands shaking, my foot shaking, everything. And then he tell me, um, he say, you could you could tip on your toe on that foot. I say, I say, nah, boy, I frightened. Listen, pain. And then he say, all right, tip on your toe on the next foot for me. I tip two. And that work. He say, you can't go up on the next foot. He say, nah, I damage. He say, let me feel. And then he go on to feel the back by your Achilles. And folks, from the time he feel it, he say, nah, it snap. <laughs> And serious mode, there's no laughing and thing. Nah, it snap. You see? Um, and very, very quietly, because Dylan is a gentle kind of guy. He a bedside man all on the feel. You know what I mean? Dylan say, um, with all the laugh and thing, everybody laughing and thing, he come easy by man. Tell me, hey, man, you should go in the emergency room. That might be surgery. Well, no, I want to cry because studying, but I know, get back in my strength mode, looking like a strong man, making my comeback. And now playing football without pain this week is a busy week in the office. And I tell all I done under pressure in work already. I want to cry. Because now I don't know. I can't. And I just want to let you know as well that this is my right foot. Salute my right Achilles for holding on for 10 to 42 years. But that means I can't drive. <laughs> so I'm in some trouble. Because I usually carry this little fellow here. My name is Zachary. Carry him to school every morning and pick him up every day. But now I can't drive. No, I just say, saying last week how much I enjoy the drive down the road and drive back up, spending more time with him and doing little things on a Friday. And no more, not a mass, no more Starbucks on the evening. No more Maria's. Any of your mother go spoil you if your mother picking no, you up every day. No, 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 wait, hold on. Um, it's only eight weeks so after July, August vacation finished. You could pick me up again. Well, that is in September. But yeah, that is it for you for the term. So I out for the term. And when he say eight weeks, I want it to be known as well that by the time you're listening to this, I am probably doing surgery. I'm scheduled for surgery for Tuesday. I am scared. I tell you now, I wish I could have get. But before I get to the surgery, I had to say as well that with the with the with the the care that I get from my guys down in the Riverview, I appreciate it greatly. I couldn't be wrong. A better group of fellas than fellas. In the pain, I trying to ice, I lie down, I sit up, everything pain, and them men talking. Listen, uh, you had to laugh, you know, when them men are wrong, I'm pain, and I, I had to laugh with all them kind of things they come with. So they're keeping my spirits up because at this point, I'm in pain, but I'm feeling down because I'm just studying all the different things I care to know. And them fellas keep me up, and then my boy Jade swing right back and play an ambulance role. We say we're going medical associates, but Jade is a sugarness man. Eh? But you know, Jade, Jade is from Shogunas. Anything I need in Shogunas, I just call Jade. Now, within the little delirium and trying to reach in the car, and the, them fellas had to help me come in the car, I could only hop on one foot. I really find like Jade taking a wrong route to reach Medical Associates because Medical Associates is right on the main road close to the highway. I see Jade going all up through Lunch Park and thing. I say, well, if this man knows Shogunas better than me, and I might be hallucinating. Me, I know he's lost, Jade lost, but everything has happened with good reason because Dylan put me on to. A, a surgeon, an orthopedic surgeon in St. Clair. A guy by the name. I will never put the man's name out there yet. Let me let the surgery go good. <laughs> Before I say anything about this man's name. But Dylan sent me up the time and he was real, real cool. That, that, that. I mean, this must be about 7, 8 o'clock the night now. We, we up in St. Clair and he came, he checked it. He told me exactly the same thing Dylan was saying. He said, boy, it's better you do the surgery. He said, if you do, do the surgery, at, you're at risk if you play sports again. He says, this is something that is pop again. I, I don't want to go through that at all. And he said that since he's done the surgery, it, nothing never pop or anything like that. So, no, since he's been doing surgery, nobody who ever do it on ever had a recurrence of it. So, I am going into the surgery Tuesday morning. I'm scared. I want... General anesthetic, but apparently it's local anesthetic. So when this man is in my foot back, I gonna be awake. I don't know what to do with myself. I, I walk with my phone, my headphones, and thing because maybe I could watch a movie. I don't know what to do. I, I ain't sure. I'm scared. I just say one feel pain, but on the other hand, 
you might have to see it. And I'm sure they will let you eat. No, I think there's per cur- Well, I hope they have the better per curtain. Because I don't want to turn around and see that. Now we can't pass out. But maybe passing out is the best thing for me. But I'm thinking of it like dental surgery. Where you lie down there, you stay still. And they do. The Dylan tell me, you will feel touch. But you wouldn't feel pain. <laughs> you see, you can't think doctors want to tell you. And I'm telling you the truth to it. Because I find like Dylan... The Dylan is a man, is a surgeon. He could have come and do the surgery for me because now I'm going to do the surgery and then I go and the doctor, a white man. Man, real cooler. But I think to myself, boy, if you send me by the wrong white man, which this man is not, I say, but if he think my Achilles, so if 400 years of slavery we escape from, you know, if, if, if suppose he think turn again to, to the next 100 years, suppose he think up my Achilles where I can't run at all. I can't get away from massa. Suppose he do my kid. I feel like it. When I'm on down by my ankle, there could be a next ball and chain he put on my foot. Like I'm a a little nervous. But now, nah, so on all seriousness, the doctor is a cool guy. And I should be okay. So very early tomorrow morning, I'm heading into surgery. And that is that. So that's how the start of my week. But this man, in fine style, he busts my eyeball. And then, now we say he have a song. Like this signal means come around here. Producer. Without mashing up the lights and everything. This man, uh, not all the, he done bust up my eye and take care of me. Now my Achilles thing, and he have a song he wants to come on the podcast and sing. I'm sorry, okay? Come in our mic. Go ahead, sing your song, quick. Uh, Daddy is not the. <laughs> oh God. Go ahead, yeah. Football is not the place for daddy. All right, just now. Okay. Come on, let me I'm gonna bring him here. He say he have a song. He say he have a song to sing. After he done bust up my eye, let me hear what is this song he coming to sing now. Go ahead. Football is not for my daddy. He went and played and bust his Achilles. All right, right out. He didn't even sing it in the mic. Bust your kite. Go back in your seat. <laughs> you see when you live in, you live in a house and it's haters. Man bust my eye and it must be because my eye bust my Achilles bust and I couldn't see where I was running. So it's a chain effect. Now this is all good. This is what it is. So I'll, I'll keep all you posted. I will, I will, of course, you know, I'll be back here and I'll tell you all about the surgery and thing. Somebody tell me, carry the camera and record the whole surgery so I could play it. That shall not happen. Yeah. I'm just letting you know. That will never happen. I ain't going through that. That is a lot. Daddy. Hmm? <laughs> um, I, we don't hate you. You, in particular. No. And if you say that chain of reactions, will something come out of your Achilles? Boy, bye. <laughs> so, all right. So, on to serious matters in this week episode. Uh, we have a few things to cover. As I say, I'm doing this and again out here. Because I have to go and have, have, have a meal to eat. And then I can't eat until 8 o'clock in the morning, right? So, I call it the last supper, just in case. You know what I mean? You never know how these things is going on. But we, 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 we praying for good things, Dr. Doc is I, I know in good hands. Dylan will always leave me in good hands, and I, I feel real comfortable with the doctor going to him the night. And I, I take his word that surgery is the best way to approach this. So we inside. Now let me talk about somebody. What, what we gonna start with this week, boy? Let me talk about a serious thing first. Or yeah, let me talk about two, three serious thing first now, and then we will get on to my kind of thing because we have some stuff to talk about the culture and that, and that is my safe zone. But should I? Ole, ole could indulge me. All right, let me talk these serious things and then I have a song to play for somebody close to the end of the episode. I hear it's people birthday and thing this week, you know what I mean? Loyal listeners, so we had to celebrate that. So I was following up on that story with Akil Chambers last week and the whole idea of the Sabga report and all that. And I saw something that, um, that stood out. This, ex- this article is from Denise Wren in the Express. And I'm skipping past the first part of the article because it went into some detail about what happened to Akil Chambers and all the, the fact that it didn't match uh the, there, was, there was no dna match and all these things all this stuff we said last week in, in the little clips that we spoke about from the interview with uh is it robert sabga yeah robert sabga from the 1997 task force now are uh, skipping past a few parts as i said this is following sabga's statements on sunday the express contacted pca director david west last tuesday based on questions submitted west said The forensic evidence, which consisted of swabs collected from the deceased, were sent for testing. A human spermatozoa was detected and the sample was placed in storage. Two years thereafter, the sample was destroyed by 
incineration, which at the time was a standard protocol. He said, it's, he said it's important to note that unless DNA analysis is performed on the sample of human uh, spermatozoa and then matched against that of the, sub of the suspect, the mere finding does not result in identification of a suspect. Statements without filter. Attorney Rajiv Persad, who appeared alongside Desmond Alam, senior counsel, deceased, and attorney Donna Prowell, seeking the interest of the chamber's family during the coroner's inquest in 2003 to 2004 into Akil's death, was, was asked to give his views on Akil being the victim of a pedophile ring. Now remember that this Rajiv Persad is part of the defense for Akil Chambers' family when the, um, when the situation was happening back then. And I find his words were very sober. He said, having seen newspapers and reference being made to Sabga, who was the chairman of the 1997 task force set up to examine children, children's homes, he said, from what I've read, I understand that someone whispered to him the existence of a pedophile ring and that high-ranking individuals may have escaped accountability. Additionally, Persad said he will be treating the information in the same way I treat all information that I see in the public domain. I've learned over the years, particularly with the advent of social media and the internet, that it's very easy for a person to say whatever they want about anything or anyone without there being any sort of filter to determine the credibility of the information. He said at its most basic, Prasad explained, if the information told to Mr. Sagwe is of a nature that is credible, substantial, and capable of investigation, then by all means it should be investigated and probed to determine whether it takes the investigation process into the death of Akil Chambers any further. He quoted as saying, at the end of the day, what matters is the quality of the information that was given to Mr. Sabga. Persad said from his recollection, no DNA evidence came out of the coroner's inquest before Coroner Sherman, before coroner Sherman McNichols. Uh, what I have clear recollection of is that the, after the inquest had closed, Mr. Desmond Allen, senior counsel who was leading the team on behalf of the family of Akil Chambers, had drafted a letter in which he was drawing to the attention of the then Commission of Police or, or Director of Public Prosecution, he can't remember which one, that in the evidence obtained in the inquest, there was a pair of swim trunks that Akil was wearing when he was found. Mr. Allen was asking the relevant authorities to have the trunks sent for DNA analysis, which was usually done in those days outside of Trinidad and Tobago. The attorney said he was not aware of if the trunks were ever sent for DNA analysis and what results were obtained if they were sent. Uh, and they went on from there. But I just found that his words were very sobering and I want to point them out. Salute to Rajiv Pasad. And you, you could hear that it comes from an attorney because his thing is that, okay, this is back in the public domain. He, he might have gone through this. If this was 20 years ago, how many ever years ago it was, he's probably gone through this 20 times. Where something happened in society, the story comes back to the fore, and then all of a sudden everybody pointing fingers as in a cover-up and as a blame, and this one was in it, and that one was in it, and people asking, well, anybody from the UNC was involved, anybody from the PNM was involved. And this, just like what we saw last, it, it, be, it become a whole politicized thing. You know what I mean? Well, both who blaming who, and this one, and you, 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 you're wondering if we really... As I saw Joel Julian saying, you know, making a political football out of a pedophile ring in homes for un underprivileged children. And I was glad to see somebody come out and say, well, hey, listen, hey, as an attorney, is either is evidence or is not evidence. You see that here, say, especially with social media where everybody has something to say and people calling names willy-nilly. I was glad to see somebody come out and take a stand that is a little different. And it... it is better when it comes from somebody who was also in defense of Akil Chambers. So not something like somebody who involved in the cover-up. Although, you never know sometimes. Because people will be watching it and they say, all oh, that is part of the cover-up. All the defense was part of the action and that is why they're looking to cover up more and more. But I say salute to Rajiv Pasad. I, I like, I like, you know me. I try to be a little bit balanced in the way I approach things. And I like people who just take a step back when the place get warm. You know what I mean? Um, so that's that for that. On to other news, we've been we breezing through this quick enough. And let me tell you something. One of the few reasons I'm recording here now, while my foot is... I wonder if I could show you my foot, boy. <laughs> my foot in a splint. Uh, it's, a, it's not a cast. It's looking like a cast, but I could walk on the foot. But if I, when I sit down here and it's down for too long, it's a problem. But I hear because a certain sister of mine threatened me. Imagine that. I, as a man, injured, in pain. All the boys in Riverview standing there, everybody checking in how you're going, thing, boy, sorry to hear that. 
Everybody concerned. My sister's like, hey, you better record a podcast and put it out in the morning. Don't we'll play here. You're taking because next week is my birthday. So I hear. <laughs> I hear taking bad up. No problem. Uh, Wade Mark says there's a windfall due to Putin's war, not government efforts. Now, if you're following, last week when everybody was, uh, including myself, was avoiding the midweek review because I didn't want to see it. I didn't want to hear. I didn't want to know what it had to say. Not the midweek review, sorry, the mid year review for the budget. Typically, I find that mid year review, and when I say typically, I mean in the last five to ten years, maybe, is a bad news thing. It's like, hey, well, boy, we had, to, we had to cut back this, we had to cut back that, this going down, this going up, you know what I mean? So I was trying not to pay attention to that mid year review because I said, Trinidad clearly in a recession, and what good news could possibly come out of that? But salute to Call Mimbert, and the men say we have a surplus when they was expecting a deficit. So, you know, the, the, the nice thing about it is in this country, and I always hear Naldo and, and Jude talk about it on the 868 podcast, the, when you see you do something good, we pat ourselves on the back as the governors, the, the people who are in charge of this country, you know what I mean? You say, yeah, boy, a, a, a surplus, you know what I mean? <laughs> hey, we're doing great. And then when things going bad and we get in deficit, they say, global supply chain, global supply chain, this is not my fault, you know what I mean? We're real good at doing that. So, Imbert was taking a little pat on his back, so Wade Mark had some things to say. So, this is from the Newsday, and this is Sean Douglas. Uh, opposition sender Wade Mark scoffed at the finance minister, called Imbert's boast of high revenues by the state, saying those were not due to any efforts by the government but was simply the fallout of Russian President Vladimir Putin's invasion of Ukraine. Yeah, man. Speaking on Friday in the Senate debate on the media review to supplement the 2022 budget by $3 billion. Maid said, Maid, Wade, I say Maid, yes. Wade Mark said that to describe the economy, Imbert should have cited real GDP and not nominal GDP. Uh, the difference between real and nominal GDP is that real GDP... Should I go into this boy? Real GDP takes into consideration how much inflation they have in the society. So real GDP is about how much you could buy. Nominal GDP is about the figure itself. So and now a nominal GDP could be, let me say, sixty billion dollars or hundred billion. But the when you look at inflation, that's that hundred billion could buy less than it could have buy last year or year before. So when they say real GDP, they are adjusted for inflation. So it might say the nominal is a hundred, but it could really buy a sixty billion worth of goods and services. I hope that makes some kind of sense. Uh, the boost of revenue is not due to plans, not to strategy, not to any kind of economic activity dealing with new strains of revenue, new strains of revenue. It has nothing to do with the attraction of FDI by the government. It has only to do with the war in Ukraine. <laughs> so if it's anybody we should be thanking, it may be Vladimir Putin in Russia. Saying that the ammonia oil price had skyrocketed from $182 to $1,200 per, per, per metric ton, Mark said extra revenues now seen had nothing to do with the intellectually bankrupt government. <laughs> now, again, we have a way that anything go look look what the opposition is doing because as i'm saying right when i do something good i say yes man yes calm pat myself on my short back and i say boy you do a good job and when things go bad i say global supply chain not my fault not my problem where what the opposition is do as a response to that right anything happen good on your on the government side let me say yep yeah. Global supply chain, that had nothing to do with the government. The government, they do nothing good. They're wicked. The PNM, wicked. You know what I mean? And anything that happened bad, it's Rowley's fault. <laughs> Automatically. We ain't taking that from him, Rowley. We fed up with you and all that. So this is this is coming from Wade Mark in true opposition style. And it, 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 it makes me ask, ask the question, right? When UNC was seeing some of the highest oil prices that this, this world had ever seen, Oli wasn't taking credit for that, like good governance and making sure programs in place and building hospitals. And Oli was basically saying, hey, we did nothing to do with this. And we basically get lucky. But that, 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 that will probably never happen. And we know that, right? But in the meantime. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, from now on, I just supporting whoever UNC doing us. I ain't, I ain't support our Wade Mark saying here. Yes. 
come down, come down. You and me, come down, come down, come down, come down, come down. I don't want to leave you out of the horse rowdy. Come down here for me now. You're OD Clippy and the Miss Boss, but look what you do to the country now. Yes. The feel it too dry. Yes. Now in the left side to die. Come down from there. This is only had to come good and I want to hear who coming better than that. For now, I'm supporting everything that the UNC says. So he say he warned against living in a fool's paradise. I've given you the assurance that if there is a peace agreement between Ukraine and Russia, we are back to square one. Let's be real. This is a house of cards that could crash anytime. Look when I hear opposition or anybody who in, 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 in these realms of governance talking like this, I wonder if all they live in here too. We this talk sometimes like if Okay, if they make peace, or everybody dead. Like if we not in the same country and we, so you not suffer. But then again, them not suffer from the same things we suffering from. Now them men, bread butter, as my grandmother used to say, on both sides. So they 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 sweet. Mark said in 2020, TNT had imported 2.4 billion liters. All right, so okay, wait, Mark. All right, salute to you. You know what I mean? You, you do a good job. You do the opposition thing, and whatever happened, you oppose that. Trade unions, <laughs> trade unions said government two percent increase over eight years. So, let me just try and read that right away. Trade unions hit government's 2% increase over 8 years offer as provocation. It's as close as I could get to reading that right. So, the story behind this, right, is that for a long time, public servants in particular have been, you all would have heard the term 000, or back in the day it was 001. So, they have outstanding negotiations for a long time. And um, <laughs> the government make an offer now. I don't know if it's coming off of the back of the fact that we make loud money according to, 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 to um, Wade Mark. We should probably look into financing Putin or, or siding with Putin so that he could continue the war so that we could be smooth, you know what I mean, and develop as a country. But maybe because of that and some little extra money, we say, well, all right, that 2% go do the trick for the last eight years. But reading from the news there, this Elizabeth Gonzalez. Trade unions have called on all public servants to prepare and send a strong message to the government by shutting down the public sector public sector was up and running, in rejection of its counter-proposal for 20, 20, 2014 to 2021 salaries. The chief personnel officer, Dr. Daryl Dindial, and his counter-proposal to trade unions offered no increase for the period 2014 to 17, 1% for 2018, no further for the period 2019 to 2020, and 1% for the 2021 negotiation period. Uh, that amounts to 2% increase over 8 years. The offer was made to hourly, daily, and weekly rated workers of central government, the THA, and the municipal corporation employees. Emotions ran high among union leaders and their members at an emergency press conference hosted by NUGFW on Friday afternoon as they addressed what they described as an insult to the working class. The briefing was attended by NATO General Secretary Michael Anisset. He's still around. President General of the Amalgamated U Workers Unions, Michael Prentice, Contractors and General Workers Tr Union, General Secretary Ermin Dibik, and Transport and General Workers Union, Union President Judy Charles. The union said they were hopeful that after the minister announced the government's decision to use some $2 billion of revenue surplus to pay public sector wage increases, people would be given a fair share. Now, let me discuss this, sir. Eh? Because I see a whole set of things going around online that, again, I'd, I'd go back to my boy talking about unsubstantiated information circulating on social media. <laughs> Somebody work out some sort of equation. There's one of the greatest set of maths I ever see in my life where he, he work out that the back pay everybody get. So he, he, he juxtaposed it against the $2 billion the government make and said the back pay everybody again is about $1,500. And I think to myself, boy, I don't know if that is how that is work. I'm pretty sure that is not how that is work. So when they say they have a negotiating period where they, they say a 1% increase, so for instance, from 2014 to 2017, you increased by 1%. It would mean that 1% of your annual income for, for that year and year on year you, you will calculate what that is, and that would be owed to you. In other words, if your salary was $500 and you get 10% increase, you were supposed to be earning $550. If three years pass, that means I have $50 a month for you for the three years. And that would be from 2014 to 2017, the increase would be 1%. No further increase. That same 1% will carry through because you, you, you still have to make up from a $50 for all them time all the way through 2018. And then if you have a next. Uh, 1% from 2019 to 2020. You had to add on top of that money. So so anybody who ever get back pay or work in the public sector like TST and back pay days used to come in sweeter. But it does always work. And I uh, I could see why people might say the 2% is an insult. 
and it seems small and, uh, and and a union will always take that position because the idea is to m- to move the needle if what they offer you making a back pay for you of ten thousand dollars let me say then i could see how i negotiate and try to get it to get twelve thousand five hundred or fifteen thousand it would be better for all the unions and sorry all the members and for union dues you know what i mean union dues are coming a little smoother if people get in the increases over time so I just find it that while I was looking at it online, I think it is, is, I, I'm not sure it's an area that people understand, but everybody have an opinion on things on social media, whether they understand it well or not. And I also see people comparing it to the CPO. Uh, is it the CPO? Uh, yeah, Daryl Daniel. Somebody get a hold of Daniel's salary. And the part break down to it to say, all right, your salary is 30000 your housing allowance is seven, your motor car allowance is seven, you have a phone allowance at 500 and it adds up to about 52000 And they say, but this man's so wicked. you wicked. you making 52000 <laughs> And he only wants to give you 2%. And I was like, what? This math is beautiful. I don't know that I understand these maths that people have been doing online. And on. the thing about it is, when you could talk loud or you could speak well, you tend to get a large following of people who just... I don't want to say, I don't want to use the term ignorance, right? But they don't know better and they don't want to know better. They're not going to try to research it and find out for themselves how this is work. They're basically looking at what a person say as gospel and they take that and run with it. But I, I've also seen, you know, politicians just make so much of money and this and thing and they only give into. to. I will, I will agree that the idea of politicians giving themselves increases when everybody else won't freeze does not pass the eyeball test. But I want to say that it also does not move the needle. Because I saw Colm Bird talking about how much money this is going to cost the government. And it's in the loud billions of dollars in back pay as well as going forward. If, if I'm not mistaken, it's six or seven is the figure I had seen. So it, it costs a lot in back pay as a lump sum among the people. And then it costs a lot in terms of recurring expenses. So when you say six million, when you say six billion as a recurring expense, I mean every year you're going to face that six billion dollars. And with salaries is a sticky thing. Because salaries don't really, as much as people might say, you can't really carry a man's salary down. You might be able to freeze and do those things. But if you come to the public store and say, hey, what, instead of 111, we're giving you minus one, minus one. Listen, they go have mayhem and nobody ain't taking no pay cut, right? Because, of course, we feel government money free. So the idea of taking a pay cut, especially against where people see a lot of, or perceive a lot of corruption in the society, people ain't taking that. But the idea of comparing that to what the government, when you look at cabinet, what it is, 36, 41 people who making up the, the house or whatever it is, listen, them numbers don't move the needle. You know? So when it might, you might hear that it's 50, 50 something thousand or 100 thousand as a salary, you multiply that by the 40 people, like 40, 100 thousand dollars, you work out that match for me. And it, 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 it's inconsequential in the greater scheme of things. That does not change the thing like $6 billion. It's because of how much public servants we have. And I saw somebody online asking a question or making a statement rather about how long should we as taxpayers carry the burden of paying public servants? I find it's one of the greatest questions I ever hear. That person who asks that question is a pragmatic, rational thinker. Number one, because he is seeing where, hey, it's not like if when, when the government say 5, 5, 5 or 20%, listen, that's our money that we use to pay public servants. And I, I have no knock against public servants, but when I think about it, for instance, in my world and most of us who, who, who listen to this or tune in, for, for, for us to make more money, you have to be doing more things. That's the reality of the world we live in and now. It's either you're making the company more money, you're putting in more hours, you increase the quality of service, you're saving the company some kind of money, or you yourself, you take on an extra job. The only way to, 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 for us to increase our incomes is more productivity. Now, granted, if our income remains the same and time go on, like my boy Nick is telling me inflation is eroded away half your money every 10 years. The price of almost everything is double every 10 years. You might want, I will take that into consideration in terms of how I project my future income. Because I don't want to end up in a situation where my money end up worth less and less. And I'm not making more and more. So I might set up myself to be able to negotiate for more money. But the, the way to negotiate for more money for me in the long run comes in the form of a B- BSc and MBA and short course or ACCA and CPA or CFA. and It comes in the form of doing more. 
to get myself more qualified, more ready, so that whenever the time come, I make a jump and I make a move. Our partners listen to this podcast. I can't call no name, but they are there talking to him and time. Yeah, these guys had hurt me, so I change jobs. He's a crack shot in his field, so the top companies come in and ask him, hey boy, come over now. The come over now don't mean 1% and 1%, and you know, I could guarantee you that. <laughs> if you send me more 1% and 1%, I am moving. I had to get some sweet for me to come over. I had, I had, I, what are you doing that for? So, while we in the private sector have, a, have that mentality, a lot of times, like, I've, how am I going to better myself so that I could make more money? I could have a side hustle. I could do something different. I could buy and sell some things. We have, it's, a, it's, a, it's a mentality. It's a way of thinking. We simply accept that the, 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 the government, we, our, our collective dollars, are going to take care of somebody's uh, deteriorating real income because of inflation. Because as I was saying, real GDP versus nominal GDP, right? Think of this when it comes to real income. Your nominal income is what, you, what they say in your, in your paycheck. You know what I mean? You're making a 10000 That's your nominal income. What the 10000 could buy is what is called a real income. And we see in, in this country now, real income's going down. All of us facing that every time. I'll tell you, when Stacey going to grocery, <laughs> it's all hell break loose. No? I'm coming out pop my Achilles here. I say, boy, thank God for Sajiko because the amount of money she's spending in groceries, I would have to wrap up my own foot and you know, put some iodex on that and go, and go back to work. You know? But real real incomes across the board falling so everybody in this mode now like okay my, my, my money my money ain't adding up the groceries getting higher everything gas getting higher so how are we gonna make more money but we have a tendency to look at public servant increases as if it does not affect us we's not public servant so it's whatever whatever the thing whatever they get that is that but i just want to keep in mind like this this fellow the question asked is like how, the, the question the guy asked was how long are we going to carry that burden? And I, I like the question because every dollar that goes towards paying public servants could also be used to do other things. Because we have some roads in this country that I don't know if they will ever fix. You know what I mean? <laughs> election coming up, you know what I mean? Salute to elections. Hey, you know, I now notice the clapping button yellow. That is my, that is my UNC support right there. I have a yellow clap. So every time you remember press this, that is UNC. Yeah, but... It, something else could be done. More hospitals could be built so I don't have to go to Sinclair to fix my foot. More, more doctors could be provided for the public healthcare system so I could get through an emergency faster. All these things, you, you get where I'm coming from? And I'm not saying that, like, forget paying public servants because public servants serve a purpose. But the question will always come back to how productive is the public service? Is the public service making life better for us? Are, are they, in, in economics, they say, are they increasing welfare? Am I any happier? Am I any better off because of the services provided in the public sector? If that is the case, then I'm happy to continue to pay for it. But if in the public sector, it's hard to get through with basic goods and services, any uh, things that you have to apply for take a whole long time, we're lining up outside in the rain. This is the, the salaries that we pay, and it's for the people who hire there. And I want you to forget for a moment the the entry-level employee, the clerk, the person you're dealing with. Remember that public sector salaries also include management and public sector organizations who are making decisions in terms of how services will be offered or not offered. Who would have made decisions where, listen, for COVID, we could do all these things online, but you see, after COVID, I'll come back. We are not online again. I'll come back and line up and, and, and get through these things. So I just wanted to keep that in mind. When we look at this, because that guy asked one of the best questions I hear on this topic, and I'll leave in here with that on this topic. How long are we going to continue to carry that public service burden for? Because the next burden to come, if we had marked right in any way, <laughs> and Putin decides to make peace, right? And things go back to hardship. At some point, somebody is going to take the very hard election losing decision to cut down the size of the public service. And bring it down to a size that we could really work efficiently and see how much labor we really need. And that's going to be a hard pill to swallow. But it is also going to be very expensive to the taxpayer because when they start to pay severance out to that group of people who work in the 20 years and 25 years and close to retirement and then you're going to have to downsize. We have a huge public bill to pay when we will not be making the money because the war done. And the money could have been going towards other things. But all right, okay, we'll see. We'll, uh, again, like I always say, we'll continue to monitor these situations and see what they come to. Because that is one to, that is one to watch. And I'm sure they, they're probably not going to settle on 1%. If, I mean, you know how this is going, right? It's a, it's a negotiating tactic. 
All right, so let me get into some good news now and then get out of here. I want to pop my foot. I saw an article this week that I liked a lot, and I talked a little bit last week about getting things out of the mud, right? And I saw a few people getting it out of the mud. And I like that. I always remember that you and C clap for this. I like this. From the Express, Verdell Bishop is the, is, the, is the writer. And it's about Erin Braffitt, the founder, 10 year old entrepreneur. I like this. You know? Founder of Soaps Just For You by Erin B. I like this. So many adults let their fears and doubts stop them from pursuing a side hustle. But not 10 year old Erin Braffitt. She did. She didn't let anything hold her back from launching Soaps Just For You by Erin B, a handmade natural soap business that she's proud of. The entrepreneur, a standard four pupil of the Pine Haven Seventh-day Adventist Primary School, recently spoke to The Express about her soap enterprise, her love for soap making, and how a school project on agro-processing, which focused on product research and demonstrated how to transform products originating from agriculture, piqued her interest, and she was... An, was the springboard she needed to, de- to delve into the soap making as a business. Listen, who write this? Vudel Bishop. You're very wordy. This is a long way to say this, what you say here. All right, okay, we let me stop. We did a school project. This is from, from um, this is directly from Erin now, right? Oh, where did it go? We did a school project in my standard four class called Agri Processing, and this was where my curiosity began. I began watching videos about making soap. I wanted to try it and asked my parents to purchase the kit for me. They gave me a melt and pour soap kit for my 10th birthday and it was so amazing making my own soap, she said. Erin launched her soap business this year in, in time for Valentine's season and operates out of her Sandy Grandy home. I like that. Since my parents bro- bought the soap kit for me, I haven't stopped making soaps. I do several types of soaps like turmeric and tea tree oil soap, which helps me with acne, pumpkin spice soap, which helps dry skin, and coconut lemon orange, which helps with blemishes. My soaps are all made from natural ingredients. I use real fruits and vegetables. You could put real fruits and vegetables in soap, Aaron. Okay, my soap, my soaps are all nat- made from natural ingredients. I use real fruits and vegetables in the soaps, which make it a better product and an exciting presentation. I also have several favorites, but two of them stand out for my personal use, which are the turmeric and the tea tree oil soap. It helps with my pimples, and carrot soap helps with my skin. Erin is not 10. Why, Erin? <laughs> on his skin, Erin. What going on? He's 10. Erin said all hands are on deck when it comes to producing her soaps as the family also chips in. My parents help me in all areas. Mommy does the paperwork. She's a professional photographer. So she handles all by the, she handles all by technical exposures. And she assists in all other areas. Daddy is responsible for packaging and ensuring that all the labels are properly placed on placed on all the soaps my brother helps with marketing and he also shares his ideas with me and my six-year-old sister helps me in the brainstorming phases listen erin is a general is a boss erin starts a own little family enterprise erin's parents help her to balance her soap business as well as stay on top of her school assignments school comes first and when that's completed i start with the soap activities i have the support of my parents teachers and other adults around me to keep my spiritual school and home life balanced Erin is also, look at Erin talking here, you know she's talking. The soap maker is also focused on passing for us first choice school. I'm sure it's Fatima. My soap business actually keeps me focused. My favorite subject is math and I want to pass for Bishop's Anstey High School. You know, in Trinity, not, 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 not our next one, right? Erin said, noting that she's, she isn't focused on the, yet on the career of her choice. She says, to be honest, I have no idea what I want to be when I grow up. I want to continue focusing my studies and let that guide my path. I hope her parents telling her this is what you could do for a lifetime. I'm surprised to hear say she don't want to do it. If he's 10 and he had his business, then you're a businesswoman. You know what I mean? Erin attends the Aruka Revival Tabernacle with her family and, his, and, this advice, and has this advice for other young entrepreneurs. Have God in your life is, is the most important choice you can make and try your dreams and ideas and talk to your family about them. Erin's mother, Dina Braffitt, highlighted the importance of supporting and creating a positive environment for children to grow and explore their talents. Braffitt said Erin comes from a creative family. I like this. Getting it out of the mud. This is what I mean. You, know, you understand? If you could figure out how to start from an idea that it has some soap or some way to make soap and you could put fruits and vegetables in your soap and you could you could turn that into something now that take care of your family for generations. I always talk about this. I, sorry, yeah, but I had to go back to my 1% thing. At some point, 
somebody in Procter & Gamble or somebody in Unilever would have decided, hey, we could make something out of something or make some out of nothing. And you sell one. Then figure out how you're going to sell two. And listen, in, the, in time to come, or in, in this era more than ever, you could find people who start businesses a year ago and two years ago. And, and, and making life-changing amounts of money that you could do. You could, uh, not, not to say that the money, I don't want to make, make it sound like a greedy thing. Because if you're in the tabernacle, you could get the, the, the tabernacle, the money, and build your church or build your household, whatever you're interested in using your money for. But why not? Why our enterprises had to stay as a side hustle or a small business and as a SME loan? And we had to, why we must, I don't, I, I, don't, I don't subscribe to that at all. If you could make soap, and I hope our parents continue to encourage her with that. But also to tell her that, listen, you don't grow up to be nothing, you know, you've done what is already. Like you, you start a business, you you in the papers with your soaps. I'm sure they have people like you and I who you could find out how to get her in soap. And listen, the little photos she have on the on the in the article, the packaging and everything, she's doing something special. She's doing something with pride. It's not just saying you're making a soap for making its sake. She's she's doing it well. So I, I've met a lady the other day who um when I went to clear the barrel on the port. Uh, the name of the company is Mindful Candles, I want to say. I think it's Mindful Candles. You know me and names, right? But she's a therapist and she makes candles. And it's part of her practice. Like she, she encouraged people to, you know, you buy the candles and you find your relaxing time and all that. I like them thing. Why we mustn't have that? Why can't why she got turn into bed, bath and beyond? You know what I mean? What stops us is, is really is, is, is the limits that we might put on ourselves. So Erin Gill, you make your soap. Continue to do good, fly the flag high. And more congratulations in order. My little brother just graduated. I try all how, I try all how, I try all kind of thing. And I say I go into graduation and the last minute fall through. And I can't help but think. You know, they say don't cry over spilled milk and thing. Eh? But I can't help but think if I just booked the flight and go on my way, I would have still have a Achilles tendon. <laughs> it would have still be intact. When the man feel it, the man said the Achilles is a centimeter apart, and you know, it busts, and it, the two ends is a centimeter away from one another. <sighs> and um, the more I talk here, the closer the surgery coming in, I'm frightened like hell. But salute to my guy, Jonathan Corby. Graduated with his bachelor's in California this weekend. So the, the whole squad over there, and they went to the graduation. I'm super proud of him. He is another little youth man getting it out of the mud. He was always a different little youth. When you see... Uh, one thing I admire about Jonathan from small, right? All of our family does this, right? Because we are a musical family. When we play in music, by, especially by our Auntie Merle, who is her birthday to have a song to play for you. But when we go by Auntie Merle and we play in music, right? The little children is be a part of the experience. They grow up hearing that from the time they're in belly, they're hearing that, right? And all of them, without fail, will fall in in their own way. Whereas as a toddler, you come in the middle of the music to hear what is happening. Or as you start to get older, you pick up a marak or you pick up something to knock or you start to learn an instrument and you're a part of it. And you know, you reach the age where you start to stray away now. You don't want to be wrong your family and think too much. You ain't really on them. But they all come back around and when you meet them again, they're ready to, you know, they're picking up an instrument now and they're playing or they're in the mix. They know these songs because you've them for so much years. But one thing I always used to remember and admire about Jonathan is he used to come in the middle of the parang when he was a toddler. And when we were playing music, he used to stay up at every instrument. He's stamping his foot in time, eh? which is not... Uh, not all children could do that at that age, right? But a, a lot of them do, but some of them, some of them can't catch the timing, right? But he used to stamp with a kind of... Like, hard, right? He's stamping hard and looking up at every instrument... Almost as if he's just absorbing everything going on around him. He's not smiling and enjoying it like how you'll see children enjoy music and dance. It was an odd thing he used to do. He just stamp and stare at all the instruments. And I always look at that and I say, but wait. Something different about him. I see plenty of children do that before over the years playing music. But something was different. He was so intense. He wasn't laughing, smiling, dancing, nothing. He was just observing. And now he graduate, and music was what he pursued. He's a crack shot uh, piano player. And he's getting into the field now. Well, I shouldn't say getting into. He's already working in the field of scoring for movies and film. Now, I never realized how this important this was before I started talking to Jonathan. Eh? Because when I watch a movie for the hundredth time, <laughs> I 
I just looking at the plot. I just looking at who do what and who thing and who want to kill who. And I ain't watching how how much the movie, how much the music, the scoring of it matters to the emotion of the film or how it carries you. Or in this day and age where people on their phone all the time, how the music is getting to pay attention to the screen again so you don't miss important parts. And well, when you hear him break down that, oh, I remember him doing projects as well where he would have a movie that we saw before and he has to score it differently than the music and listen it's, it's, it's funny to see when he when i watch it when he scored it i say but there's not what the original thing had he's like no when you show the original versus what he do you could it's two whole different pieces of music but it emits in the same mood so salute to him he graduated in that he working in that field and I like to see that again. I, I, that, that's, that's my definition again, again. It's all the mud. And he's the type of person who's so determined. He, when he when he set out his mind to do something, nothing can stop that man from doing what he do. He's responsible for this, you know? Yeah, he make that. You know what I mean? I'm waiting for a shorter version of it. I can't find it long. <laughs> but like, I can't get him again, man. The man only rate going up high. Like, I can't pay him to do that again. So, salute to Jonathan Corby, my guy. Salute to you. Very, very proud of you. And keep going on to do greater and greater things. And as we pass it now, before we go on to more good news, I want to play a little song that I I want to make a guess based on the request that we get every single year, God said, when we go by this lady, she's asked us to play this song. So I'm playing this one for my Auntie Merle. <laughs> Fish my father does you stupid lion went ahead on points on the show Complete eliminated Mr. Depo The next man to beat was Will the Outrageous He asked the judges if he could lie first The judges asked lion, the lion agreed Say any topic will take is alright with me He outrageous, I strongly we meet head on And when we done see who had fit to wear the crown You hear lie? That is lie, lie, you hear lie? Teacher Percy say if you tell a lie you're going to hell as soon as you die. Kick it up, let it go, choke it up. <laughs> yeah. The outrageous say that he knew a tailor comes to make him sue. If you show him a man coming wrong a corner, he could make him a suit. A 
and don't even measure a talking about suit sitting down correct expertly made and fitting perfect he used to sew for shakespeare make suit for hamlet and up to this day he yeah, make, make a, a mistake yet. yet you know the crowd went wild they couldn't cool down i said liar the lion losing the crown the judges brought the crowd back to order and asked the lion to lie about a tailor he said my man is the best Rolf is his name cutting cloth making suit is his game don't show him the man my tailor is class just show him the corner where the fella pass and he go make a suit that is tailor you hear lie? lie? king liar teach your pussy say if you done a lie you're going to hell as soon as you die whip it up I don't think that's her favorite song. She, the only other favorite song I know she have, we can oh, that, that that song in no end. She gonna know the song I'm talking about, so I can't play that here. Talking about Lord Nelson, my mother sent me something this morning. A musical evening with Lord Nelson. This is posted by Devon Seal, right? Legend on his own, but a musical evening by Lord Nelson. Are you ready for epic night? The musical icon Lord Nelson brings Queens Hall to life with a repertoire of his classic hits. Joining him on stage on this incredible night will be Ronnie McIntosh, Devon Seals, Oscar B, and the Signal Hill Alumni Choir. Let me get a UNC clap for that. So my mother say we in that, so we in that. So the of July, all cars and boots and thing off by them time, you know what I mean? I start to study, I say my mother now invite me out, I can't even go. So the of July, we good to go. Showtime 7.30, so if you know where to find me, find me at that. Musical Evening with Lord Nelson, Saturday the 30th of July. I'm looking forward to that, Lord If you listen to this podcast long enough, you know Lord Nelson is an artist that I love. So I, I, I not. I'm going to more good news. Stern John appointed the head coach of St. Lucia's men's national senior team. Great news. We talked about Dwight York last week getting a contract to coach in, um, in Australia. I know Stern John is head of... St. Lucia. I want to say, yeah, Latapi is the coach of Barbados, I think still. And Shabazz is the coach of Guyana. And now we have St. Uh, Stone John. Stone John has been around coaching for some time, if I'm not mistaken. He had a role as an assistant coach under Latapi, maybe at some point during the national team, maybe under Dennis Lawrence. Stone John was there either as a striker coach or assistant coach or something. So I'm glad for St. Lucia and he appointed there, as the, as the article says, Stone John, former standout player from Trinidad and Tobago, appearing at the 2006 World Cup Finals for Soccer Warriors, has also served as head coach for the Anguilla. I didn't even know that. And former assistant national coach of Trinidad team, assistant coach of the national senior men's team. He said he was also head coach of the under-17 team in 2019. So salute to Stone John. That is a lot of good news that we're happy about and I hope that he continues to succeed. And you know the football, I did tell him a fantasy season and in a way that... <laughs> I, I, I'm happy with my fantasy season. I take some licks, I take some blows there, but in the biggest league I in, I come second. Well, the biggest personal league I in. I think I'm um, wide at 6 8, salute Lasana, and then I come 20 something in Lasana League. I was hoping I could have to at least get a top 10 so I could I could let him hear about that for the next year or so because sure, Lasana is about 250, 300 in his own league. It's embarrassing. <laughs> but I was up there. I'm happy and I have a pretty big league too. I might be 30 something in there. So, pretty good scores. The most important thing is that beat up man like Bert and Marlon and that whole squad, Shaka and Osman and Juan, the whole squad. Everybody get licks and uh, somebody still come and beat me in the end. But I also think that the, I was watching the end of the Premier League season. This is one of. Uh, uh, salute to Man City. Let me say that first, right? Salute to Liverpool and everybody who. It was a great weekend of games. I was glad all my classes finished as well so I could relax and watch the game. The morning, I, mean, I think, I think that, uh, uh, this is what I'm doing with football concern now. Eh? I feel going forward, you see, when I dislocate one finger and now my Achilles pop and his surgery and them thing, I think I retire. <laughs> I think from now on, I'm a football watcher. So I'm going to real watch sports, but I feel, I feel my days for sports done. I ask the man, I say, boy, what's cause your Achilles to pop? So he might say 42, 42 this cause it to pop. I say, oh God, it's rough, rough in these streets. So I feel, I feel I could be done here. But... Salute to everybody who uh, 
playing them games yesterday, but particularly Man City, who don't make nothing easy. Man City went down 2 0, right? And at that point, and now I'm not a supporter of Man City or Liverpool. I wish bo- we could have found a way for both of them to lose and Chelsea end up winning. But that wasn't the case. Liverpool, uh, Man City went down 2 0 after Liverpool went down 1 0. <laughs> and it looked like, what? Well, if the result was like that, Man City would have still win. So Man City went into that game under. Well, I guess under pressure, but all they had to do was was beat Aston Villa, to be sure. And, uh, I mean, that's a no side that they will usually have trouble beating. So, I suppose the last, the nerves of the season and all that. And that's where you had to salute the Premier League. Yeah, I hear men talking about Forza Milan and all these kind of things. But these kind of side in these leagues that nobody else don't watch. But the Premier League has something special going on. Where When all the games going on on that last day of the season, all the hype is about the Premier League. You'll be a diehard La Liga or... Boys called France League. You gotta be a diehard one of them to be following that on that day. Because when I see City went down my two, I switch. I say, well, all right, let me see the Liverpool game. I can't hear Salah come on. I say, let me see what they're going to do. And Liverpool was one all at the time. And they could, you know, you're telling yourself at some point Liverpool going to score. And my belief is that City came back and went up 3 2 before Liverpool took the 2 1 lead in the game, right? But I feel if Liverpool had taken that lead before City had come back against Villa, it would have made it even more exciting because now they would be antsy and under pressure, you know what I mean? Not playing the normal game. And my, I, I, I feel that's what would happen. But salute to Man City, only to make nothing easy. When only come to win, I think only win out the league outright early uh, last year or a couple of years ago, but boy, they like excitement. Last bit of good news here. And things to highlight from the region. I saw Time Magazine come out with the most influential people of 2022 and Mia Motley was on that list. I like that, you know. Say what you want, right? Mia Motley is a politician, so you know politics can go happen. She called a snap election and beat everybody and win all these seats on them. But I think that, for me, one of the most important things about a politician, other than the, the, how nice the jersey is and what kind of song and what kind of dub play they could get, one of the most important things is words that inspire. I find inspiring words are an important thing for a leader because the, the leader care, as much as we listen to these people talk about Rowley had to come down from there and he wicked and call him birds and raise any price of gas and all. Any one of them in there would have do the same set of things. They don't do nothing different. But what I do respect is somebody who can inspire people and move people because a nation can be nothing that an individual is not. We have to make the place nice. We want to throw rubbish all about. We want to leave our yard. You know, we have a, a tendency to clean up our place, make our place look nice, but dump the rubbish out in the empty lot. We, we have a mentality that had to change. And governance is not a thing about who in power, you know. Governance is a self thing. Self-governance, should I tell me, Corey, you went and you eat all kind of thing and you now come out of the car. Don't go and try to sprint and try to play around the dung ball. Now I have to go and govern myself in surgery in the morning. <laughs> you understand? Governance is an individual thing. You have to make that personal decision. But Personal responsibility and personal decisions don't come out just like that. Somebody needs to be certain policy, certain framework, certain laws that encourage people for taking the right decision that you want the society to go in or punish people if they don't. You know what I mean? If they go too far. And one of the ways to do that is inspirational leadership to get people to see better for themselves and their country. So because some of the things that we do here with our own selves and our own neighbors... We'll never do if we go Miami or we go Toronto. You know what I mean? Even the way we treat this thing and we throw rubbish and, you know what I mean? You chew gum, you spit it out anyway. Some of those things we, we just don't do because the society calls for something different when you go there. And we had to stand up and make our society better if we want it to be better. But where we devoid their leadership, people will find excuses to be corrupt because they will say, well, them teething and them thing. And, but when you have somebody like me or Motley, and I, I will say as well, right, that <laughs> before I move on to me or Motley, it's one of the things I respect about Watson Duke campaign, eh? because Watson Duke and this, um, his lady named Kezel, I saw terrible bullet names, but the other lady I was talking about last week, right, his right-hand woman. They're inspiring because they're saying, listen, everybody in Silots could have a pool, everybody in Lavantil could have a veranda, the veranda or random, right, but I suppose it's a view. But, you know, and I, I'm, not, I'm not necessarily saying that that might make a whole lot of sense as, in, in and of itself, but it's a vision, and that's that's sometimes it's just start like 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 what we talk about early and just sometimes it's just starting you know, with a little vision and you want to make soap and then your soap is a reality and then you look back generations on the road is Unilever you know what I mean and your your family never had to work for the rest of their life if they don't want to 
that is what leadership is about to me. I had to be able to inspire. So why not plant the seed that everybody in Sealots could have a pool, everybody in Lamonsville could have a pool, a veranda. Every, everybody could have what they want. And that inspirational leadership is what we need. And that is one of the things I respect the most about Mia Motley. Every time she speaks, I feel like she speaks on our behalf as a Caribbean people, as black people. And you know, it's very, very inspiring whether she's saying words to us in terms of how, and I'm saying us like I beige to her, but us in terms of how we behave as a country and a region, but also how we expect to be treated. So, Mia Motley was selected as one of the most influential people by Time Magazine. They do this every year. And this was the article. This is what they had to say about her. It says, there are some who stand tall and stand out no matter where they are from. Whether a large, densely populated country or a small, nation, a small island nation. Prime Minister Mia Motley of Barbados is one such person. Bold, fearless, and possessing a great intellect and wit. The Prime Minister is a brilliant politician who knows how to shake things up. Since she was a young woman growing up in the Caribbean, Mia Motley has always cared deeply about critical issues impacting the world. From poverty to debt to climate change, she is a vocal advocate on the world stage for responsible stewardship of our planet so that, la- so that nations large and small and people rich and poor can survive and thrive together. At the COP26 in Glasgow late last year, she chided world le- the world's leaders for not working more diligently to limit the potential catastrophic impacts of climate change, telling them to try harder. While the chair of the World Bank and the IMF's uh, development committee while chair of the world bank and the international money funds development committee she reminded the world's financial gurus that the level of a country's per capita income may not be the best measure of its wealth after all one climate change induced hurricane can take a significant toll on all that wealth mia motley is an icon in her country having won re-election by a landslide the Prime Minister strides boldly on the world stage. She's an embodiment of our conscience, reminding us all to treat our reminding us all to treat our planet and therefore one another with love, dignity, and care. And she also knows and has a great relationship with Rihanna. Well, I put in that last part, right? But salute to Time magazine and salute again to Mia Motley. Always coming up with as much as I botch up that whole paragraph, always coming up with ways to challenge the world and challenge the status quo. And and, and, and as they say in the end, to Treat one another with love, dignity, and care. And I'll leave it only on that. I know it's the shortest episode I do in a while, but circumstances are what they are. And as we talk about love, dignity, and care, I again just want to salute these fellas in Riverview Park, man, like McCasey. And you know what I mean? These fellas and them like to play their hard and thing, right? <laughs> There's a bunch of soft men too, because these fellas take good care, man, and make sure that I was good yesterday evening and put me in good care in hand. So I'm going into the surgery, I tell them they're frightened like hell. I don't like this kind of thing where I up and a man digging in my foot. I don't like it. You know what I mean? And I studying. So I I responsible for staying still. Suppose I get a little twitch. You know when sometimes you're doing something and you, suppose I get a twitch and he make a bad slice. That is it. So I, 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 at the point now where I, I, I'm going into a right foot and I had to tell him that. I say, I'm good. This, this right foot might be responsible for the most tap-ins in the history of small goal in Trinidad and Tobago, the most among the tappings. You know what I mean? You know, this, this right foot is responsible for a lot of goals. Thousands of goals came off of this right foot. And now this man is trusted. All right, okay. And, and, and good hands. And I'm not sure if this right foot coming back again, whatever the last tapping was, might be the last. I, not, I, I can't take You see that? As the man say, 42. If that is what 42 does bring, I don't want to know what 43 have. And all I'm studying now is, even if he do surgery on this one, and he said I ain't gonna snap again, what go up with the left one? I can't go through this a second time, you know. I ain't able. And <laughs> I wonder then too, if he's so sure that when you do the surgery, it ain't gonna snap again. Why you just do the left one time as a line down there? You could just sort out the left side one time so I could that may, maybe I will come back with some more little confidence in his sweat. But boy, right now, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. I'll, I'll, I'll see where it bring when that time come. But that is about that for me. I'm going to find a song to leave all with me because I go in my bed and see if I could get some sleep. As a matter of fact, you know, it might be a better idea for me to stay up whole night so that I could sleep in the morning. Come on to sleep through this thing. This man says an hour and a half with a surgery. You know? I know if I have like this, no? And I want to sleep through Sinclair Bill too. You know? Let's see what's going on. And before 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 I go into that song as well, what other than these Riverview boys here, 
I want to say a special salute as much as I get you trouble to my wife and my partner and confidant and my fat friend. Well, I was going dirty. Oh God, I can't go dirty again. <laughs> I now realize I can't go dirty again, man. If the, when that when that is, you could go dirty in a cast. We my one little fat boy like I okay, I go dirty. I should have never bring up this and now I depressed again. But I want to salute to my good good wife because if it's one person is always at the forefront <laughs> to take care of me no matter what. I don't like when she take care of me, you know, because I always tell her she, she want me to be an invalid bad. Me, you know, if she feels the insurance money, always is seen like she trying to be lining up for that critical illness or insurance money, and you know, I don't know why it is. But anytime anything happens to me, one person is be always there to make sure that I get anything I want. I will not paying up my foot for the next eight weeks. This is room service right through. I ain't, I ain't getting up at all. I ain't paying. <laughs> I ain't paying right through. But she wanted she want to give me a sponge bath. I don't like that. You know? I don't like it. I don't like this idea that you're trying to make me into a dependent now. I but 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 I will say that she is always there, regardless of what it is I'm going through. She always right by my side and making sure that I'm good. So salute to her, my good good wife, and my guy, my producer. You see, he make it through the whole episode. He's a man who's right out, you know. As he's serious topic, reach, he's bust out. But again, only thing with him, you need to learn, man. Daddy, you need to stop playing football. Daddy, no more football, right? <laughs> and he come home and tell me today, he say, I was good today, you know. He say, I shed a couple of tears in class, but I was good. And when he hear I had to do surgery, he say, well, he say, at least it's not his heart. <laughs> so salute to my home base, my family, home, yeah, my mommy, everybody. I saluted everybody. My pops, everybody in here, in here. But I want to play this song really as a salvo to everybody who know about what it takes to get out of the mud. Or people who might have an idea in their mind that they want to go through. You know what I mean? Even Stacey getting this marriage out of the mud because she said, I tested. She said, first you come into your COVID and I have to take care of you. You're going as, as soon as COVID done, you come, you break your finger. <laughs> now you're going to rupture your Achilles. She said, you're testing this marriage and you know, like you're testing to see where it go take for me to leave. <laughs> So, so, salute to her. Pulling things out of the mud, not easy. And I want to say, it's especially when it comes to businesses, right? I, I think most people who I've ever met. And one more salute too to my class. This little class I had here is the best results I see from my class in a long day. This class was real good. I don't want to bore you with this, but this class I had in CTS here is one of the best online classes I ever do. They were always participant, you know, participating in any discussion that we had. We've never stayed on topic on any issue. Every time we started to talk about something, they had questions, they challenged things, they brought their own experience to it. And I've never seen one group get so much distinction. So salute to them as well. But in terms of pulling it out of the mud and your business idea and what you're working on and what you're trying to do, yeah, it's, it's like... This is episode 99 for me in this podcast, right? And I remember how many years I used to say, I want to do a podcast. I want to try it. But when from the time you plan this seed that you like it and you want to try it, because I like Joe Rogan, I like Joe Budden, I listen to them all the time, you know what I mean? And I say, but this is something I could do. Nobody doing this in this space as far as I see, and where they're talking about current affairs and things. And, you know what I mean? Or, or do, bringing my own spin on it and, and talking about the music and the culture and and hey, culture, wait, before I play this song, I it's a good thing I remember culture is. One more thing before I go. I saw this week, <laughs> sorry, I see this week, I blame it on the pain, right, my foot, that Starbucks opened a branch in the airport. Let me give them a clap for that, right? All right, that's it for that clap. Now you see clap. I have mixed feelings about this. I was glad when I hear Starbucks was opening a branch, especially because I say as I'm traveling to do this here, so I'm glad to go in the airport and get some Starbucks. That will always be good. But I can't believe that the space that they gave Starbucks is that atrium space. You'll remember what that space was for initially when they had built the airport. That space was supposed to be designated for cultural displays and acts. And I'm not sure if people would remember that. But many, many times when people greeted in the airport, Keshon Walcott and them come back. You know what I mean? These the, the soccer warriors come back as qualifying for the World Cup. It's in that same atrium people gather to see our heroes and our stars. When they have cultural displays, whether it be for religious or cultural or the other other reasons. So they are African drummers, they are steel pan, you have things for Diwali, you have things, you know, that represent us as a society, as a collective. 
I, I don't understand how you could sell that space to a commercial entity. Now, I saw some people online talking about the fact that we, we just sell it out to foreigners. I, I would say not exactly. I understand that Starbucks is a foreign brand, but remember that with a franchise, is a locally owned business, Prestige Holdings, who would be earning any profit from that, which in theory will benefit the whole society, right? But I don't think it should have been sold to anybody. It didn't matter if the person was local, abroad, black, white, or whatever. I, I, why would you sell out a space? But, it, but it's so indicative of how we behave as a country. You know, our culture is not a, it's not a business. We don't have a whole lot of pride in it. It's, it's what it is. It's an afterthought. So when when the Wally come next time or Eid come and we had to display ourselves, we go, we say, good, Starbucks, then now what we do, boy, um, let me put it down on this end. You know what I mean? We put it down on this side. Or we go just do it in the old airport. Or, it's so easy to sideline our culture and make it into something marginal. And a, a lot of times, sadly, is, is for the sake of commerce. So a small kind of salute to Starbucks. But even, even as a local business person, a, a prestige holdings themselves, could have said, nah, that space is for culture. We wouldn't take that. But why? Business, huh? So, yeah, this time I'm finishing. To anybody who brings out the mud, <laughs> such an important part of our lives. We all have business ideas. We all have things we want to try. And it takes me back to as I go, as, as I'm getting into making a hundred episodes. A, a part of my can't believe that I do this 99 times. <laughs> it's, it's surreal. I was at a time preparing for this and talking about things and that. I, I want to, well, we could, we could do all the voter tanks and things next week, right? I want to go and cock up my foot. But my message is just start. Just, just start, just start, just start. It, it not, it, it don't matter if it's perfect, it don't, matter, it don't even matter if it's good. It, it, what matters is when you start, you just got a little better at it than you was when it was just an idea. Whatever that idea is, whatever it is, you want to help out, it's a charitable thing. Is a business, is a degree, whatever you want to do. Let me tell you something. Find a way to just get started. Forget the classes, forget the degree, forget the equipment, forget all them different things. I, 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 just, I just remember reading an article when I wanted to start the podcast. My model was Joe Budden, eh? the crystal clear audio. I wanted to get to that point where I could get that audio right. And I say everything else go fall into place. But if, if my audio ain't right, I, I feel like I do have a chance. And I remember reading something online saying, listen, if you feel like you want to do podcasting, like do it on your phone. Do it as voice memos. Don't let anything stop you from doing what you want to do. And I, I, I'll leave it all here and down until they start. Just, just roll out. Do it. Do what you're frightened. I was talking about um, Danzel, uh, Estrian Danzel and her podcast last week. And I remember messaging her and saying, girl, listen, the, the thing good, I, I, I like it. Go, Garden of Eden is the name of it, right? I like it, you know what I mean? Go through and score, you will do good. Just keep doing it. And she was saying that, you know, it's real personal. And every time I record, I'm frightened. And I was like, yeah, good. You, you will be frightened. You will be, because putting your whole self out there is a scary thing for me personally. I, I still, in some ways, uncomfortable with it. And I always wonder every time I do an episode, but anybody go like this, anybody go enjoy it. What about my face? Go out there. I say the wrong thing. I edit it bad. Listen, I do all them things. I edit whole episode wrong. You know what time people have to call me and tell me? Um, it's about five minutes here where you're just not saying nothing. No, no, it's just silent. For five, and it's because I edit the wrong thing. It's at times I do whole episode and supposed to upload it and lost the whole episode. I had to do it over. But you can't learn none of them things if you do start. It, 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 I know what I know how you're feeling. I know what you're thinking in terms of starting it and... It think will be where you want it to be. And thing. I, I, I put it this way. If you're ambitious and you want this thing to work, wherever that idea is, it will never be where you want it to be. It will always be a work in progress. You will always find ways to improve it and to better it and change it and thing. But you can't do none of them things if you don't start. And like I tell people about doing a degree, for instance, I always tell them, listen, a degree is something like a long thing. You know, it used to be three, four years. Now it's a year and two years and people still complain about how long it is to do a degree. Or him, my partner Jay, talking about doing his thesis, and uh, he ended up some pressure. He's studying every night. He behind this thing, and I, tell, I, I like that. I like that grind because listen, one day you go if you finish and you forget all that pain you went through, you forget all that fear you had. But the issue is that whether you choose to do the degree or not, or you choose to do the thesis, or you choose to start the business, the time will pass. The same two years you feel so long to do this program. That two years is going to pass whether you do the program or not. And then you're going to be looking back at it and saying, hmm, if I'd start, I would be two years in. So my, my, my thing I'm leaving you on, 
And I, 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 this that, that was my attempt to be Mia Motley there, if you didn't notice. That was my Mia Motley attempt to inspire people. But one of the most inspirational songs I ever hear is this one. Yes. Make it if we try 
just a little harder If we just give one more try Life could be much sweeter Well, that is it for me there. I am out. I will tell you how it goes. I didn't know I'll be here next week. Tuesday's 100. Well, one thing you could be sure about, right? I get in to sit down because I'm out. I can't drive. I'm home. So, we going back. I remember I tell you we would be iffy with some episode dates. I feel we're good for Tuesday morning for the next eight weeks or so because the kind of sit down, they put me to sit down here. I might as well get the podcast right and work on some other things that I wanted to do for some time now. So, I will tell you know how it goes next week.